Hi, do you have drunk elephant? Is this for your mom? No, it's for me, and I just turned 12. You're looking for retinol? Baby, I, you don't want that. Give it to me. Oh my God. It is nothing new. For generations and generations and generations, we have children who want to do the things that adults are doing. And it is also nothing new when the adults say back, you are too young for that. And to be 100% with you, sometimes the parents are right, sometimes the kids are right, and sometimes there's a meet in the middle place that we can get to. Due to the popularity of the internet with kids and preteens, they're being exposed to a lot of things that adults do that they may not have realized or wanted to do before. And one of those things is having a skincare routine. Now kids are wanting to start elaborate skincare routines with the whole 10 step K beauty. You got the cleanser and then you've got the toner and then you've got the retinol and the serum and the this and the that and the kids wanna do all the things, but are all of those things actually good for kids? But more importantly, are they safe for kids? Today, we are going to talk about what the experts say on a child having a skincare routine. And if it is okay, what is an appropriate skincare routine for a nine-year-old or a 10-year-old? What kinds of products should kids stay away from because Maybe they're useless, but also maybe they're dangerous. I have all of that information for you. So if you're interested in that topic, hang tight. We are jumping into it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to my channel. It is called Gen Love, and here on Gen Love, we talk about a lot of things that are happening in the beauty space right now. And one of the hot topics right now, I'm thinking it's because of gift cards. There have been reports of kids, not teenagers, but kids flooding stores like Sephora and Ulta asking for elaborate skincare routines. And the adults in there are like, what is even happening? You're nine. Why do you want drunk elephants? I do want to let you know, though, before we get started, that I am not a dermatologist. I am not an esthetician. I am not a skincare professional. I am a skincare and ingredient nerd. I am a geek. I like to research things. I like to read PubMed for fun. Therefore, I have learned a lot over the past five or six years about skincare ingredients. And when I learn something, I love to share it with you. And it's important to know that you and your doctor know your child better than anybody on the internet can. Can. So please, 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 before starting a skincare routine with your child, you need to talk to your doctor first if you have any questions about anything. This video is meant to be a forest type of video. We're looking at the big picture and your child is a tree in that forest. And in this very strange analogy, your child's pediatrician is the tree doctor. Talk to them. Another thing I want to mention is that I am one person and sometimes I make mistakes, especially since I am not professionally trained in this area. I'm trying really, really hard not to make any mistakes, but sometimes things are brought to my attention and I may not say something perfectly, or maybe I, I don't say something completely. If I find out that anything needs to be clarified, it is going to be in a pinned post at the top of the comment section. Hopefully there's nothing there, but if there is there, please read it because it may be important to the topic and I can't insert it. Once the video is up, I can't put it on the screen for you to see. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the research that I found. All of my resources, will be down below. The resources that I've used are places like Very Well Health, Polish Choice, Prevention Magazine, the American Academy of Dermatology, and various other publications where they have asked doctors opinions on specific topics. The first ingredient, and I think the most important ingredient that parents need to watch out for to keep their kids away from, is retinol. Retinol is a form of vitamin A, and what it's used most often for is to help fight fine lines and wrinkles. It's also used sometimes for hyperpigmentation and it is very often used to treat acne. Prepubescent children do not need retinol. They just don't. Once they get to an age where they may need some help with acne, then it's possible they may need some kind of retinol. That's when you're going to talk to your doctor because there are some risks. And one of those risks is the exposure to the sun because when you use retinol, it makes your skin more sensitive to UV damage. And that could lead to an increased risk of skin cancer for the child. 
Beyond that, the use of retinol can have effects on bone development. And the thing is, is there really isn't a lot of research. I don't know if there's any research. I'm not going to say there's no research, but the resources I'm saying is basically there's no research on the use of topical retinol in children because there's legit no reason for them to use it. And because high doses have been shown to have an effect on the bones of adults, we do not know the effects that it may have on a growing child. Professionals recommend starting retinol no earlier than in the mid-20s unless there is a problem with acne that is bothering the child. That's when you're going to go to a professional dermatologist, talk to your pediatrician, not just grab something over the counter. If your child has a few acne spots, maybe they're starting to go through puberty, their skin is changing. There are some recommendations for that that are much, much safer. I'm going to get to those in just a minute. That is the number one ingredient from my research that your kids should be staying away from. The second big one is chemical exfoliators and even physically exfoliating. Like retinol, kids don't need chemical exfoliators. They don't need physical exfoliators because their skin is still doing all of the job that kid skin does when you're young. It's the kind of skin that us adults are trying to get is the kid skin. That's why we use the exfoliators. <laughs> AHA chemical exfoliators, an example of that is glycolic acid. Its job is to help us to slough off dead skin cells so that our skin can look bright and youthful. Children do not need this. The second major type of chemical exfoliator, there are more, but the second major type is BHAs. The job of those is really mostly for oily and acne prone skin, where it helps to clear out the pore lining so that all that junk gets cleared out and it can help to fight acne. It can also help to help the pores to appear smaller because all the junk is cleaned out of them. These are not problems that children have. The big problem with using AHA chemical exfoliator like the glycolic acid is like retinol. It also makes your skin more sensitive to the sun's rays. And even if you put that sunscreen on your baby before they leave the house, uh, by the time they hit recess, sunscreen's going to be gone. Are they going to be responsible enough to every time put their sunscreen on before they go outside? Especially for something that they legit do not need. You have to decide as a parent if that's worth the risk to you or not. And in truth, glycolic acid and other AHAs can be irritating to the skin even for adults. And with the BHAs, if your kid doesn't have acne, there is no reason for a BHA chemical exfoliant. Dermatologists recommend that if a child does have acne and it's not severe, it's just a pimple here and there, kids can use a little spot treatment on the acne spot if they would like of a BHA, but it should not be an all over treatment. And depending on the product, that may be a recommendation for even adults. But children do not need. The third out of four ingredients that your child does not need to do is face masks. Well, we'll say some face masks. You know, this is the thing. Face masks are fun. They're cute. You get the little mud all over your face and you know, it's it's kind of fun. It's like a spa night. It's relaxing, all of that. But uh, some of the ingredients in some of these face masks can cause significant irritation. And again, kids do not need these ingredients. So if you are a parent and your kid wants to do a face mask, what doctors say is that you should focus on masks that provide hydrating and moisturizing ingredients, the things that will hydrate and moisturize their skin. If it is a mud mask, if it is a clay mask, those masks really need to be used sparingly, if at all. Your kids do not need it. Those are mostly used for oily skinned people who are experienced excess oil. Kale and clay is not a harmful ingredient, but it's job is to absorb that excess oil. And if you have a, a skin type that doesn't need to absorb excess oil, you could be causing more harm than good by absorbing that oil that your skin is perfectly happy having. Parents really need to look out and see if there's any irritation or any problems resulting from that mask because it can mess up their skin because their skin is just fine the way that it is. These products have a purpose. And if the child doesn't need that purpose, it could cause a problem. Along with that, a lot of masks have these exfoliating ingredients in them. The AHAs, BHAs, glycolic acid, salicylic acid. They should not be using these types of masks. 
If your child chooses one of these masks that has one of these ingredients, they may be able to tolerate one of them, not in a routine, but as kind of a special spa night. If it's paired with hyaluronic acid or some other humectant to pull moisture into the skin, but there really is no guarantee. All glycerin's another one that's common in these face masks. There's no guarantee that it's not going to irritate your child's skin. So please use at your own risk. It is not recommended. If your child child really wants that pampering feeling. They really want to do something fun. I don't like these. I'm just saying I do not like them, but this may be something fun your kids can do as an every once in a while thing, and that's the peel off masks. The peel off masks are notoriously ineffective. <laughs> <laughs> they notoriously do uh, pretty much nothing, most of them. I'm not going to say all of them because I haven't seen all of them, but most of them don't really do anything. So if you see a peel off mask and all you see is that glycerin, that hyaluronic acid, maybe some aloe, stuff like that, sure, fine, why not? The reason why they don't want to incorporate this all the time for a very long extended period of time is these tend to have a lot of alcohol in them in order to help them to dry down. And that can be drying to the skin over time. There's a lot less fear over alcohol and skincare than there used to be when I first started researching ingredients. Uh, now people are kind of realizing that it really does take a lot of alcohol to dry out the skin. So that may be something fun that they could do once or twice a month. But the best, the best kinds of masks for your kids to use are the fun hydrating ones. Anything with apple extract, watermelon extract, aloe, anything that is marketed as being moisturizing, but make sure you flip that over. Look for salicylic acid, look for retinol, make sure those are not in it because sometimes they'll sneak those ingredients in. But anything that is has a, a relatively simple ingredient list and maybe is a fruit themed, that may be a good one for your kids. The final one is one that a lot of dermatologists strongly do not think is good for anybody, and that's fragrances. This is a hot topic because some studies say that fragrances sensitize the skin, meaning that you can no longer use those fragrances anymore because you will have a reaction to them. Your skin can no longer tolerate them, and some people do get that from actually using the fragrances over time. So if you want to have your kid avoid fragrances, that's probably a really good idea. But in the end, avoiding fragrances is not something a lot of people choose to do because of the olfactory experience, the happy feelings we get from scents. And there are plenty of adults that have used fragrances their entire lives and are not sensitive to them to their knowledge. So it really is a parental choice of whether you want to risk that with your own child. So what is a good skincare routine for a child? Meaning a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, maybe even an 11-year-old if they really want to. Yes, you can have a good, healthy skincare routine for your kid. Through this research, I found a doctor. His name is Sarub Chowdhury, and he is a specialist who co-founded one of the largest pediatric dermatology practices in New York City. In the article that he wrote that is linked down below, he says one of the big issues with pediatric dermatology is that it is, quote, relatively in its infancy. He says, as a result, parents who self-research can sometimes do more harm than good as they attempt to learn about best practices and products for their child's skin. Dr. Chattery says that a skincare routine for a child needs to be kept very simple. He says to stick to cleansing, moisturizing, and sunscreen. For a cleanser, he says pick one that says gentle, including Cetaphil and Vanacream gentle wash for babies or bar soaps like Dove. They are mild, safe, and inexpensive choices. You may already notice the issue that I'm having with Dr. Chowdhury, but I'll get to my little issue. <laughs> in just a second. Let's go with the rest of his recommendations first. So for moisturizer, he says, because many soaps remove the skin's natural oils, making it harder for a child's skin to maintain moisture, he recommends looking into a cream or ointment rather than a lotion. Children with particularly sensitive skin will need a moisturizer that includes ceramides, so he tends to recommend CeraVe. For sunscreen, Dr. Chowdhury recommends a physical instead of a chemical sunscreen because he feels chemical sunscreens are more likely to be irritating to their skin. He recommends recommends Blue Lizard Baby or California Baby sunscreen brands. These kids are not going to want brands that say baby on them. I'm just telling you right now. They're not going that's not the skincare routine that they want. <laughs> I think that that's that's the 
big issue. Like, I think that what he's saying, of course, is based in science. And I love that for us, that we're getting the scientific information. But his product recommendations, the nine-year-old is not going to go for lizard baby sunscreen. It's just not going to happen. What was it called? I wouldn't call it lizard baby. <laughs> Blue lizard baby. I wasn't that far off. They're going to want the things that they see on social media. They want the drunk elephant. So the question is, is that stuff safe for them? Does that fall into his categories? This is where I'm going to start interjecting my opinion as a parent, as an ingredient nerd, and also as a formally trained educator who has a background in child development. I have a 15 year old non-binary child and I have a 12 year old boy and my 12 year old boy does not care. I just want him to shower. Like that's all I care about is that he showers he washes his hair, he brushes his teeth. Like we're not getting into a skincare routine with him. He does not care. My older one, however, started a skincare routine at 12 years old because that was when they started getting acne. So the first thing that I asked Phoenix when they started wanting to do a skincare routine was why do you want to do a skincare routine? And they specifically said because of the acne spots and also because they wanted to enjoy the pampering experience. So in your kid, that's the most important thing to find out is why do they want a skincare routine? If they have a specific need or something that's bothering them, then and you definitely might want to think about addressing that and also addressing why it bothers them. Is there a social implication? Because we also need to be taking care of our kids' mental health and making sure that they're okay and safe in that way. All humans need to cleanse. It's important for us to cleanse. No matter what the dirty people on TikTok tell you that in nature, we don't use toilet paper. So why do we need toilet paper in real life? That was a, I don't know if it was a serious TikTok or not, but I saw that. We all need to cleanse. I think we all know this in the space. It's obvious. So getting a cleanser for your kid for their face is something that's reasonable. Look for one that says it's formulated specifically for sensitive skin and look on the back and see if you see an ingredient called sodium laurel sulfate. Sodium laurel sulfate is fine for a lot of people, but some people it causes irritation. So if you want to avoid that potential, then you may want to bypass products with that ingredient. That is different than sodium laureth sulfate. Sodium laureth sulfate doesn't have as bad, nearly as bad of a reputation. I think some people associate them because they sound similar and think that they're the same thing, but they're not. It's the laurel one that is the one that is more um, more irritating to some people. Another thing you can do is you can buy them things for their skincare routine, like a headband to pull their hair back. Or uh, Phoenix asked me for these. These are really cool. I'm going to put them on the screen. They're like little uh, wrist bands that you put on. These are so cool. And I didn't even know these existed until Phoenix told me about them, but you put them on your wrist and the point of them is that when water goes down your arm from washing your face, that you don't get water going all the way down your arm, which also might help, besides it being more comfortable for them, it might help your countertop to stay a little drier too. And it's fun. It's fun to get get ready for your treatment or whatever with a little headband and your little arm wraps and everything. It makes kids feel like they're grown up. Phoenix, like many 15 year olds, occasionally get some acne, especially around the hair line. So the way that we address that is with the Polish Choice uh, BHA chemical exfoliator. They have a small bottle of that, but they've kind of moved away from that and they've gotten into using the zit stickers, the little the little stickers because they're so cute. They have some little Hello Kitty ones, stuff like that. Hydrocolloid patches are wonderful. They're very cute. They make them in all different kinds of shapes and it's a great thing for them to put on before they go to bed. So when they wake up in the morning, their spot is a little bit smaller and maybe easier to cover if that's something that bothers your child. I also think that it's really important. This is something that I, I feel from my soul to not say that your child's acne is gross or to make a big deal over it or to give them a, a complex about it. I feel like when we were growing up, it was like, you have acne, ew. And I feel like that was unnecessary. <laughs> to do to us. And I want to make sure that I don't do that to my child and make them feel self-conscious about their acne. If they have an issue with it and they want to take care of it, fine. But for a while, I didn't say anything when they got acne spots. Like, oh, can I help you with that? Or let's go ahead and get you something for your acne. I said nothing because if it wasn't bothering them, it shouldn't bother me. That was a parenting choice that I chose to do. It's up to you whether you want to adopt or not. I figured I would just share so that in case you hadn't thought of it that way and maybe you'd like to do that, 
that is there for you as an option. And then for moisturizers, ceramides are great for everybody. It doesn't matter how old you are, ceramides are great. So any kind of basic moisturizer with ceramides in it, big thumbs up for my kids. Or just basic moisturizers without ceramides, just something that doesn't have any of those things that I'm trying to stay away from. I personally love honey in my skincare. I feel like it makes my skin feel really good. So that's an ingredient that sometimes I'll find and buy something for Phoenix. And just like with everything we've been talking about, about hydrating, moisturizing, yes. Chemical exfoliators, retinol, no. The other thing that is definitely a 100% yes is sunscreen. Everybody can wear sunscreen. And sunscreen can be paired with a moisturizer or it can be used instead of a moisturizer. According to the articles down below, this is what it said. Some parents prefer to use mineral rather than chemical sunscreens for their kids because there is some evidence that chemical sunscreens are absorbed into the bloodstream. That is real. But the thing you need to keep in mind with that is that we don't know if this exposure poses any risk. That's what the jury is still out on. And the thing about that is that kids may prefer the chemical sunscreens because they're much less likely to leave a white cast. And in the end, science says, see, science is like magic, but real. Science says that sunscreen, either, either type, any type of sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. One thing that I've noticed just from my own personal use is that sunscreens that are marketed for the body, for babies and kids are the worst with white casts. They're they're horrible. They're so bad. Like you can't even barely rub it in. Like it takes forever. I know you've been through this. If you have kids, I know you've been through this where you just can't get the white to go away. What I've personally noticed is that sunscreens marketed to adults for the face that are mineral sunscreens that are not the chemical sunscreens, the mineral sunscreens are the easiest to rub in. They can be expensive though. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that I wanted to mention for my 15 year old that we do is we do not do makeup remover wipes. Instead, I got them a seven pack. It's like a week pack of makeup erasers. Those are freaking fabulous. If you've never used one, all you do is run under hot water and it removes makeup beautifully, absolutely beautifully. So not only is it cheaper because you buy them up front, you wash them, you reuse them many times, it's better for the environment. And also they're not getting the ingredients that are in the wipe. It's not, it's one less thing that could possibly irritate their skin. After they remove their makeup, then they follow that with their cleanser. It is really, really important. And I think this is something that I know because this is something I did when I was a teenager. It's really important to stress to kids not to overwash their skin. Do you remember Seabreeze? Because if you don't remember Seabreeze, you were blessed because Seabreeze was the bane of our existence and we didn't even know it. The problem with Seabreeze was that it dried out our skin and actually caused extra acne. At least I know that it did for me now looking back, that when I used the Seabreeze, I would get more acne and just figure that, you know, I wasn't doing something right. It was a me issue. It wasn't a sea breeze issue. So I just used more sea breeze and therefore got more acne. And then I would wash my face more because I thought that acne was dirty and that if I had acne, it meant that I wasn't cleaning my skin right. And I obsessed over my sea breeze and cleaning my face. I do not want that for my child. Overwashing the skin for especially preteens and older can make your skin think that it ha isn't producing enough oil and then it will produce more oil. So if they're washing their face and they're noticing that they're getting more acne or their skin is getting more oily, then you may need to look at what cleanser they're using and make sure they're not cleansing too much. The other big thing mental health wise, and this is from my educator, background is making sure that your child through this whole thing, one of the biggest critiques is that, you know, let kids be kids. And I think with skincare, we need to let kids be kids and teach them that skincare is fun, that everything they're doing in skincare at this point is a joy. It's a it's a want to do, not a need to do. Besides washing your face and using basic moisturizer that everybody should be doing after a shower, you know, with any of that extra stuff, that pampering stuff is supposed to be fun. And some kids, when they get into these kinds of routines, they can over obsess over it. They can start really looking at their flaws and things like that and start getting kind of a complex over it, for lack of a better word in my brain. So it's important from an educator, from a child, 
child development standpoint to watch out for your kid and make sure that they are not hyper fixating on the skincare routine as a must do rather than a may do. And that's of course is the skincare beyond basic hygiene. Like I was mentioning earlier, you know, keeping an eye on their skin and seeing if you notice anything that doesn't quite look right and then addressing it with them because you know, kids, they hide stuff from us. They hide stuff from their parents. They think that they can handle everything all on their own and that they have a problem. They don't want to tell you about it. And then they get themselves in worse trouble or they start overwashing their skin and all that. So just being present and, and keeping an eye on it because it's easy to get busy. You know, we're on our phones and we're watching Netflix and we've had a long day and sometimes things just slip by because we're busy. But taking some time when your kid has a skincare routine, especially if they're very young, to make sure and, key and look at their skin and make sure that they're not getting any irritation. Because to be real, kids won't always tell us. And also from a child development perspective, any way that we can bring joy to the skincare routine and not yell at them or take products away and say, you can't have that, you know, having a conversation about it and say, well, this product is lit and researching it together and talking about it and explaining why and having a real conversation with your kid about it instead of just removing a product that they love because you said so really, you know, doing it with them as much as possible and guiding them and helping them rather than being the overlord parent who is in control of everything because that's when the kid is going to start hiding things and rebelling even more. That is the child development perspective. I feel like I'm preaching a little bit, but I'm not meaning to. I'm just giving information just in case you hadn't thought of it like that. Some of you I'm sure already know this stuff, but just in case. Because in the end, your child may be really disappointed that they got a product that they really love and they're finding out that it doesn't work well for them. That's happened to me as an adult. It's probably happened to you too. So being sensitive to that feeling of of disappointment that they can no longer use a product that they really enjoy and working with them through those emotions rather than, you know, just taking the product away and leaving them to deal with their emotions by themselves. But in the end, the biggest, biggest thing I want you to remember is what I said from the very beginning, that you and your doctor are the ones that know your little tree the best and have to make the best decisions that you know for your own kid. I'm just a person on the internet. <laughs> and you know your kid best. And with that being said, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup and skincare awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are appropriate for ourselves and for our kids. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. What do you think about kids having skincare routines? Do you agree with my takes? Do you disagree? Because like I said, I, these are just my opinions. They're just, everybody's got one, right? I would love to know yours in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you over here to watch, including one I picked out for you special that I think you're gonna like down at the bottom. YouTube pick the top one based on your viewing history, but if you do need to go, it's no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did, and I'd love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.